This is a 2008 Made in Mexico Deluxe PJ Bass, which was, um, yeah, the Deluxe upgrade at the time was just an active EQ where you could select the mid frequency and either boost or cut it. Uh, it had a blend control, an active blend, which was nice. You didn't lose volume as you get towards that middle position. I had to replace the tone control. That's the reason I started this whole upgrade and then ended up going down the rabbit hole and just redoing the whole thing. In this video, I just thought I'd take you through and explain some of the upgrades I'm going to be doing to this thing and at the end of it, do a little bit of reflection and see if I, I think some of the upgrades were worth it. Uh, the first major thing that's going on is a replacement bridge here. We've got a hip shot high mass bridge, uh, 62 bucks. I'll have a link in the description. Um, strings, I'm switching to Thomas Dick Infeld's Jazz Bass. Uh, they're flat wound strings. So I've been using the Jazz Swing Set that they make for guitar. Uh, I've had it on my arch top. I've had the same string set on my arch top for like two and a half years. Now I replace the E and the B, the unwound strings, because they get rusted and either they'll break or they, uh, they'll just lose intonation, sound really dead. So I replace the E and the B, but the flat wound strings, I've had them on for over two and a half years now and I love them. So I'm going to try these out on bass and I'll check back in in a decade maybe. For electronics, I decided to go with EMGs. I'm actually, I'm getting rid of the old pickups, the old electronics, everything. Um, EMG makes a really nice design. You get the pickups, uh, you get the electronics with it, and it all just connects together. There's no soldering. This is just gonna be super easy, and hopefully I can be back up and running in uh, less than an hour. I heard a set of EMG J bass pickups, jazz, they're J set pickups. Um, in a base that a friend of mine built last year and they have such a hi-fi like a clear kind of like Bartolini sound to them And I wanted to, to give these a shot. So yeah, I'm gonna get these installed and I'll check back in So I've got all of the electronics wired up here. I just have to put it back together. Probably clean it up a little bit with some of these um, these cable tie mounts that I use from 3M and zip tie. Just so the next time someone has to open this, it looks a little neater. Probably just gonna apply them to the back side here. Um, but one of the tricks I use once I get everything wired up before I actually put it in the work, cleaning it up and putting it all back together, is you can actually just play some music from your phone put it up to the pickups. I'm plugged into an amp here, so we should hear it a little bit from the side. And we can check the volume controls to make sure they work. And lastly, the tone control, which is gonna be a little bit hard to hear on camera, I bet. So everything's in working order. Uh, I did screw up the dual lock. Uh, one of these cables that they give you, just a heads up, one of the lead cables from the pickups, they give you a long one and a short one. And I wish they just would've given you two long ones because I made the dumb mistake of making this, uh, the electronic junction, 
a little bit too far into this side of the pickup. I wanted it to stay away from everything else, but when I did that, the shorter lead, which I have coming from the bridge pickup, did not make it there. So I have to finagle a little bit closer in this direction, and it's gonna sit under underneath some of these guys. Hopefully there's no problem with noise or anything. So let's get that taken care of. I got the bass back together. The electronics were breezed. That was probably 45 minutes in total. Uh, the longest part of this whole process was setting up the bridge from scratch. So once I got this on here and I got the strings uh, strung up, up to pitch, I realized I had to do a major truss rod adjustment. The neck was set up for uh, too much force to pull back on what used to be a much higher tension uh, of strings. So the gauges are way different. I noticed that on the Thomas stick set, and this is consistent across all their strings. Uh, this is like the medium flat wound bass string set. So this is 100 on the E, 75, 56, 43. Remember the middle two, 70 and 56. On the Dodario set, the medium gauge uh, chrome flat wound set, the E is 105, the A is 85, then the D is 70, and finally the G is 50. So obviously the E and the G on the opposite, on the outsides are, are lighter, but the inner strings are much, much lighter. On the Tom stick, it's a 70. On the Dodario, it's an 85. Uh, on the, the D string for the Thomas stick, it's a 56. On Dario, it's a 70, which is the same gauge as the A on this guy. So all that to say, much less tension. Um, so I adjusted the truss rod, let it sit for a little bit, analyzed it again, made sure I didn't have to make any other adjustments. And then what I did was I set up the string height here, set the intonation, got that roughed in, then went back uh, this morning, double-checked the uh, neck relief, Sometimes it'll take a few hours to adjust. So I like to make an adjustment, check back in later to make sure it hasn't moved any more in either direction than you would want it to. Um, then, yeah, this morning I finally got the intonation really dialed in. And then finally the pickup height, which uh, I had to at one point loosen the strings, take the neck pickup, or sorry, the bridge pickup completely out and put a thicker piece of foam in there so I could get this high enough. One of the, the problems is that uh, bridge pickups tend to have less output than neck naturally because the string vibrates a much greater distance when you you get towards the middle of the string than it does at the bridge. So the bridge is going to have to sit a little bit higher. And what I wanted to do was just go for as close um, in volume as I could. Granted, when you're on the, the bridge, you're going to be playing a little bit harder. Um, and when you're on the neck, you might be playing a little bit softer. So I try to account for that as well, just for the, the different kind of bass tones that you typically go for. 
I'm gonna do some playing samples here. So we've got the EMGs, the Tama Sticks, and the Hip Shot Bridge. I'm gonna start on the neck with the tone full up. Um, something I wasn't able to do with the previous setup, the strings and the, the passive pickups and the passive tone control. Remember that only the, the EQ was active on, on the previous setup of this bass is I really couldn't make use of that tone control at all. I would have the tone full on as if it weren't doing anything, you know? Um, and the, the sound was just already really thumpy. You'll hear that in a little bit. I'll do an AB of the upgrades versus the older uh, electronics and everything. Uh, and so what's nice about this setup is I can start with a brighter sound and then use that con tone control to roll back if I need to. So all that to say, I'm gonna start with the neck P-Bass pickup, roll the tone back, and then do the same thing, go into the bridge. to the bridge pickup. And then how about both pickups together? So, yeah, that's the bass. I'm going to do an A-B comparison. Obviously, we're not really isolating one specific part here. We've got different strings. We've got a slightly different setup. I'm going for lower action. I'm sure you can hear the string buzzing. That's okay in my book. Um, yeah, we have different pickups, They're, which are active instead of passive, different strings, or the bridge, if, whichever one I hadn't mentioned yet. So a lot of things different. We're not necessarily trying to isolate and see what the difference of any of these, these one things have made. Um, I'm really digging the pickups. I'm really digging how the strings feel, uh, and we'll see how they kind of age over time. It's hard to gauge what the bridge is doing exactly, but I'm just, I'm really happy with the whole setup. Let's hear an A, B. So to record, and by the way, this is what you had been listening to. Um, I was just playing completely direct into my focus, right? ISA preamp, uh, the microphone preamps actually handling this guy that I'm talking through at the moment. And then, um, the bass is direct in through that DI input, one of my favorite sounds and no effects applied, no compression EQ or anything. And that was the same way I had recorded um, this session from a few months back. So I was on the old setup. The tone would have been full on. I would have been using exclusively the neck pickup. So I'm going to emulate that with the new setup, tone full on, just the neck pickup. Obviously, it's going to be a lot brighter in tone. I don't know if one is specifically better than the other. They're just different. Uh, and for what I wanted to do, I wanted to go with a more modern sound. So... Let's take a listen to that. Mm -hmm. 
So there's the video. Let me know what you thought, especially of that comparison. Did you prefer the sound, the older kind of classic P-Bass sound, uh, or this new, more modern sound? Nothing was sponsored in this video. I paid for everything out of my own pocket. You can find the pickups and the strings on Zounds. Like I said, the hip shot bridge I found on Amazon, and I'll have links to everything in the description as well as some of the other items I like to use when I do setups. Um, one of the big things that has always come in handy, I have a few of these. I keep one in each of the cases that I always take out. It's basically just like a little multi-tool um, with all guitar-sized uh, tools on it. So there's screwdrivers, plenty of different Allen-sized adjustments. You can get one that'll pull the pegs out in an acoustic guitar. So I'll have a link to this guy in the description as well. Thanks again for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, if it was helpful, hit the like button. Maybe consider subscribing. I have a playlist on the channel now of all the string comparisons that I've done, and you can find a lot of Thomas Dick Infeld string sets um, that I've compared on this channel. They're pretty expensive strings generally, but uh, they're unique for sure. If you're looking for a certain sound, I think they're some of the best ones out there. Of course, Dario also makes great affordable strings for everything. So yeah, um, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.